Okay, good. Good. Yeah. We should be live. We are. Yeah. We are. We are. Yes, we are. Okay. Well, this is it. Uh, this is something highly anticipated here on our show. Episode 17 of An Eternity of Basketball. It's 8.30 in the morning in the Philippines. 5.30 on his birthday. Francis, Kiko, Arnais, Mr. Clutch is with us to join us. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Arnais, for agreeing to, to grace our show on your special day and then we're so pleased to have you here uh for everyone watching on uh, live on facebook now you know a big round of applause of course but okay francis are nice uh, welcome to the show sir thank you thank you it's uh it's a privilege to be here you know uh, i just hope you rec people recognize who they're looking at <laughs> well it's it's the same my my my, us, my, gran my grandkids call no no my grandkids call me papa smurf <laughs> yeah, well, the, well, the, the very, very apt yeah, for that. Well, you know, uh, well, on this show, uh, we got the, the title of our show, An Eternity of Basketball, from a line that Joe Cantada used to say during the game. So, And uh, we like mm -hmm. to throw it back to, to back then in the early days of, of uh, PBA here in the Philippines. And so we, we just like to sit down, tell some stories about how, how all this started. Uh, we know that you're from Bacolod and... Uh, mm -hmm. I would like to. You, know, you probably got your start in basketball when you were back there in Bacolo. You know, can you tell us uh, how when you started, uh, you know, dribbling that ball and shooting those jumpers and looping layups? Ah uh, no, well, looping layups came way, way later. No, <laughs> starting basketball. Wow, I was like maybe you know three years old in in uh, I was grade one in. And before we moved to Bacolod, we were in Cebu. And uh, our, you know, I was I was grade one, so can you imagine? My six years old, maybe. And and my teacher would would see me. Sh I had no ball, so I would try to shoot my 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 school bag into the into the goal, no. And I remember my mom telling me that that particular teacher said, "I know, you know, that kid one day will become a basketball player." Can you imagine that? So, yeah, five, six years old. Pero organized basketball in, in Bacolod na when I was in grade school. Yeah. Or, or yeah. Late grade school. Less, yeah. So, yeah. But, you know, I would play any sport. Uh, mm -hmm, basketball, yes. soccer. Actually, my, my, my first love was really soccer. I was a soccer player before basketball. And then basketball, anything, anything, track, you know, anything physical was was for me, you know. So, yeah. Francis, who were your okay. early influences uh, when you were when you were playing? I'm sure you wanted to play basketball, but I'm sure you watched basketball before you started playing basketball. So, who were your early influences? You guys that you wanted to be like. Actually, you know, honestly. First time I watched basketball that I could understand more or less the game was I was already uh, at fourth year high school. In, and I remember, so I never really watched anybody in Manila. I mean, you know, these players before, no? Although sometimes they'd come and visit uh, Bacolo, uh, the national team, but I don't know. Uh, so the first time I really watched it, was I remember 1969, we were, we, I, my high school, by the way, was in Iloilo. My grade school from grade one to grade eight was in La Salva Colon. And then my high school was in Iloilo. It was a school called St. Clements. It was a boarding school. And, um, and uh, we, we, we won the championship in 1969 when I was in fourth year high school. Of the, of the city, and so we represented West Visayas in the Prisa. Okay, remember pri the Prisa, Prisa. games? The private schools, then, yes. Correct. And I remember we represented Western Visayas, our high school team, but of course, we got the good players of the other schools because it's selection. And then I remember in, in and the games were held in Marikina, and um, I, I remember we were all 
quarter there. And there was a TV set. And I remember that's the first time I watched, you know, uh, I think it was the Mika. Mika pa noon eh. Uh, so, yeah, so influence, I, not, I don't know. I don't know. You know they, they said when I was young, when I was in high school, they said I played like, like uh, my mentor, Sonny Jaworski, right? But I had no idea how he played because I never watched him. You know? <laughs> okay. Until until we became teammates, so yeah. So that's so, basically. It. Oh, by so the way, just... 1969 in, yeah, in in let me finish in in Marikina, uh, we played against the champions of of Manila, which was I think Letran. We played Mapua. We played Atene. I mean, the top teams from Cebu. We played Southwestern, you know, and and. We, we we won the championship, the national championship. Our our, our little rag rag tag team, you know, from Iloilo. So that and for me that was yeah, that was one of the most memorable uh, championships that I've ever been involved in when that, that year when I was in high school. You know? Yeah. Did anybody from that team progress to like uh, the next level, Mika or or PBA? No, I'm, unfortunately, uh, well, uh, no, uh, yeah. Although we had several good players, but I don't know. Actually, I don't know how we won. I mean, we, nobody gave us a chance, you know. And so, but we did it. Teamwork, I guess. We were in physical shape, and yeah. Actually, the game I think won when I was in high school was. Uh, you know, especially in in my school team, you know, our school, our school Saint Clements, the total population of the school was 180 students, 180, 180. We were playing against University of San Agustin, which had thousands of students, right? But we won the city championship, okay? And and I guess you know, honestly, it was the the, the the team would be it was very easy for the coach so basically our place would be you know just give it to francis and you know pretty much get out of the way you know, <laughs> you know so, so and that was it that was the way it was yeah so francis how did you end up uh, playing uh, college ball in uh, in manila uh, for okay, because Ateneo. I, I've always Ateneo. Yeah, I had noticed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, by the way, uh, well, this is a story. In, I've always, ever since maybe third year, second year, first year in high school, I've always intended to play for Ateneo. Always. Like, there's no other school in my mind. Um, because I had an uncle that played in Ateneo. They won the championship. Um, and so um, um so I've always, my intention was always to play for Ateneo. So when I was in Marikina, I remember that Risa, um, a few of the players went to watch the game because they knew I, I, I'd probably go to school with them, right? And I'm talking about the Ateneo team, Kali. Uh -huh. So so long story short, I took the entrance exam, passed it, and uh, and uh, I the, the sports moderator then was was um, Father Martin. I don't know if you, right. you know him. He, Father Martin, he was, uh, okay, very involved in basketball. That was his love, and he was a Jesuit. So uh, when, I, when I went to Manila, he, for some, you know, we communicated, and he said, before you, you come, and this was the summer before my first year college in Ateneo. He said, come visit me. So I went to see him in his office in Rizal Coliseum Pai, the BAC, Basketball Association of the Philippines. He was the secretary. So anyway, so yeah, he said, you know, uh, well, you know, he said, um, I'll never forget. He said, if you're, if you're half as good as they say you are, you, you'll make the team, right? So that was it. That, that's the story. So that summer, <laughs> trained with Ateneo, and the rest is history. We won that year, 69, 70. We were champions. That's right. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. By the way, last year, 69 was 
was our 50th year 2019 uh -huh. was our 50th year anniversary right. of Both our there. championship You're and we there. we had a reunion in manila in december last december yeah uh -huh. yeah that was that was a fantastic team we had you know yeah many how many years did you play for uh, ateneo francis one year and a half okay <laughs> all right and then you moved up already? You already moved no, up no, to Tamika? Well, mm, not right away. I went okay. back to Bacolod. I went back to Bacolod. Although, although Miralco was already interested after after my year in Ateneo, um, uh, because of academics, you know, I I, I, right. I really didn't study. So, so, so I, I remember Meralco coming to the house in Manila and saying, you know, we wanna want you to try out. And I said, no, I'm I'm going back home and and finish my school, right, my college. So I went back to La Salle, studied in La Salle Bacolod for wow, okay, yeah, for about a year. I, I joined the team, the college team there, and then after about a year, I said, you know what, I, I'm going back to I'm going back to Manila. So and so I went back. And then straight to Meralco, and uh, that's it. Joined the team in '72 or '71, '72, uh, yeah. And we won the championship, the Mika, that year. Also, yeah. Uh, did yeah. you get a chance to ever watch the Meralco games? No, wala pa, wala pang oh. No, no, wala pa. Yeah, wala pa. They didn't save the tapes. I, I don't yeah. I don't remember seeing any Mika games actually. No, I, I, I did later on, but not not those early days of uh, yeah. the Meralco. No, I, I watched yeah. Epo already later on. The Solid Mills up for those those teams already uh, when you were already in the PBA. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So so you what's the uniform of La Salva called green? Yeah, green and white. Okay. Green and white. So so you so you wore the blue and white and the green and white. Huh? Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> but obviously you prefer the blue because you're still in blue until now. Yeah. Well, Francis, you know, would you, you... Well, um, yeah. you know, I, I just thought of wearing this, you know, I just thought of wearing this today because, you know, uh, I only spent a year in Ateneo, right? One school year. And, and frankly, I don't remember much of that year because it was a blur to me. Uh, it was all basketball for me, right? So I don't really, I never really took time to, you know, to be with my classmates. And so I don't remember, I mean, 90% of them. I really don't, no? So, but still, you know, I'm so blessed because when it was our 50th year anniversary last year, they all invited me. They treated me like I'm part of the grand waiting class, you know? So, and they gave me the shirt. So, I said, you know, I want to honor these guys because we all keep in touch, you know, up to now. You know, all of them, yeah, all of yeah. them. They're, they're, they, you know, they, they, we're, we're good friends now. Yeah. Francis, yeah. you know, when you, when you finally made it to Meralco, um, when you went back to Manila, no, you met for the first time a man by the name of Robert Jaworski. What were your impressions about him when you first met him? And did you ever think that it would be a lasting partnership for years? Well, in Meralco, I never imagined. You know, I was I was a rookie, remember? I was mm -hmm. maybe 19 or 20, and he was already Jaworski. So I don't think I I even said maybe, you know, I mean, that, that relationship didn't exist, correct? Uh, I mean, you know, that team was a power team. I mean, I was nothing in that team. So, so yeah, I never imagined that we would end up, end our, start and end our professional careers, you know, together. So, yeah. yeah. Although, although, you know, I, I uh, yeah, I never really got into with him in, in Meralco. It was only in, in Toyota. Komatsu, remember Komatsu? When yes, yes, Komatsu. That was the team before Toyota. Yeah, I knew. Yeah. You, after yeah. just one year, you moved to, uh, from, from, from uh, Meralco, you moved to the Utex Weavers for one year. What prompted that move, uh, change of team? 
Excuse me. What was that? Sorry. Yeah. What 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 prompted the, what was... the the move to the Utex Weavers after just one year with Meralgo? You moved to Utex first. Prior oh, because to... of Larry Moore. Okay. Yeah, I Utex. I played for about a month or two months. You know. Okay. There. That that's short. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I I I because of Larry and the coach. Coach Umar was our coach in Meralgo. Mm -hmm. So when Meralgo disbanded. Uh, uh, he asked me, why don't you play for Utex? So I said, yeah, okay. So, but I didn't even finish the season. And then that's it. I went back to Bacolod after Utex. Okay. And then back to Manila after a few months. Ano na? Komatsu na. Francis, when you were starting out in the Mika, what was the salary like? It must have been really big for a 19, 20-year-old coming straight out of Bacolod. Uh, well, first of all, I had no concept of money, you know. <laughs> uh, for me, you know, I never thought of it as big, small, uh, you know, so, but I'll tell you, I think in, when I was in, I think Meralco, our first, my first paycheck was like, oh, what, 800 pesos? Wow. A month. Mm -hmm. no, that was wow. pretty big then. Yeah. yeah, and I was the happiest person, right? It was like, you know. <laughs> Uh, although when we would win, when we get when we won the championship, we got a pretty you know substantial bonus, but but your your actual pay for playing was very minimal. I don't know about the rest, you know. But some accord that was it. Yeah. You know, I remember in I remember in Meralco, uh, um, when I was first interviewed by I think it was Mr. Manolo Lopez, you no know, who. Mm -hmm. Who ran the team was the manager and he said okay what can i do for you that you're here i said well fine. i'm glad i'm here i'm glad i'm playing for you and he said what can we do for you i said you know i'd like a, a volkswagen right i remember that a volkswagen <laughs> see i would hear na mga player binibigyan ng kotse di ba mm -hmm. <laughs> because i'd like a volkswagen he looked at me like you know what let's Let's talk again in five years, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, you know, in my first years in the Ralco, well, uh, it was, uh, that's, I think that's a good story. Yeah. <laughs> it is, it is. Uh, like, like, niya siguro, ah, ganun ba? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you didn't get the box. You didn't get the box. <laughs> oh, no, never. I never got the box. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Francis, you you played well enough uh, in nineteen uh, in the early nineteen seventies to be named to the nineteen seventy three uh, national team that uh, competed in the ABC, which the Philippines hosted that year. What are your memories from that tournament and from and what what did you feel when you were named to that team? Of course, you 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 can be you know you're you're really glad you're happy, but. I'll tell you, 73, the national team, that was, I was starting to really be, to peak, you know, in my, in my conditioning, everything. It's like, you know, you can do anything. And, you know, that, that because you're in your element, you're in perfect shape, we had a very good trainer, you know, we kept ourselves in shape. So, so my memories was, you know, fantastic. And, you know, we won the championship again that that year. You know, the national the ABC, and wow, you know, he, he, I can't explain how it feels when you win, and you're in the podium, and they're playing the. I remember the the gallery, the people in the Sal Memorial. They all spontaneously sang. You, know, you, know, uh, uh, not 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 the national anthem. There was another song. Uh, I don't remember. Ako ay Pilipino. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Goosebumps. Huh? <laughs> so yeah. that, that was a fantastic year and, and memory, you know. And I, I think that's when, that's when my, I think maybe my career started to be noticed. Mm -hmm. Because I remember, I remember playing, thank you, thank you very much to Tito Eduque. Who was, by the way, was the coach of La Salle, right? Uh huh. Right. So right. he he really yeah he, he really had you know he he trusted me he he knew my heart he knew how I play so he gave me the chance you no know? so he would use me 
he would use me quite often in, in important games, and I and I I made a, I made a good showing, a good name for myself. So I think that's where everything really you know started for me. Now you know people started to notice. Oh, it may, you know. Okay, so, so, yeah. Although that- although the year before, I think before we made the national team, Toyota won the Mika. I forgot uh-huh. that. Yeah. Our maiden year, the first year of Toyota, we won the Mika. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah, that's it. So. So was that the time also, Francis, that that looping layup started to become a factor in your arsenal? <laughs> not, you know what? No, not. That was not later enough. on. No, not even. Wow. It was, it was, it was after, I think, when the PBA started. Uh, okay. the, maybe, maybe the months before that. I just, I would be in the basketball court from morning, the whole morning, just doing that, you know, running and, and just doing that, that, that practice every single day for months and months. And it paid off, you know. So I think that really started in, in the in the PBA now, in the PBA now, when, you know, when we would have to, we would have to play against these big imports, you know. So, yeah. Uh, and you also had the opportunity, Francis, to play in the uh, the World Championships, no? Because I've got, taking off from that FIBA triumph in 1973, you had the chance to play also. I think it's in Puerto Rico for the for the World yes. Championship, yes. and I, obviously that's a different experience. In Asia, you guys were actually able to win, but in the world stage, it was different, no? The team teams are much stronger. How was that experience against those bigger guys and and, and those more dominant teams? Oh, oh, we we love the food in the hotel. That's that's what I can say. <laughs> because because playing, I mean, you know, that's a completely different ball game, right? I mean, right, you're talking right. here, you're talking here between the U.S. national team. I mean, but in, we still won two games. Now. We beat uh-huh. Australia, and we and we beat the African team, the representative from Africa. Uh-huh. So, so we won we won two games and maybe there were another couple of games against maybe I think Spain and Czechoslovakia or Uruguay, that we gave a pretty good fight. Yeah. But it was uh it it was really just we were just there to represent our area and, and you know to to learn and have fun, you know, you know, that's it. And 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 uh you know eat eat the good food and enjoy the place. You know? <laughs> <laughs> No, no dreams of winning. You know, <laughs> I remember, I remember distinctly. Our first game was against the U.S. USA, you know, and uh, they had they had a few players that made it to the NBA, huh? but at this point they were amateurs, right? And a few of them made it to the NBA, and uh, I remember after the first half they were only leading by I think eight or ten points. Right? And and uh, we said, wow, you know, I mean, you know, let's, you know, let's, that's it. Let's pray harder at halftime and see what happens, right? Pray harder. So, but I guess, ano pa lang, in the first half of the game, I don't think they, they probably didn't digest their breakfast yet. Because <laughs> when when the second anyway, long story short, they won like by fifty five or sixty points. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm looking nagis, at nagis, yeah. Nagising. Yeah, nagising. Nagising. they turn on the switch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm looking at uh, something on the internet that the final score of that game was one thirty five to eighty five. So, so that's what? Fifty? Fifty, yeah. So yeah, you, you weren't far off uh-huh. in your Memory and uh, the lineup of the P- uh, the NBA. I I recognize the name of Quinn Buckner. Yeah, he used to play for and John the, Lucas. The John Lucas. You yes. Remember John Lucas. Yeah. Yes. 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 John and, Lucas. And and uh, there's a center, the Rich. Uh, what's his name? Rich something. Uh, Rich Kelly. Rich Kelly. Rich Kelly. Rich Kelly. Yeah. Utah yes. Jazz. Utah yeah. Jazz. So you've got you've got from from big time programs, Indiana, and then you have Maryland's John Lucas. Yeah. So those are correct. Out. Correct. So that was a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. For the that, benefit of good. our viewers, uh, Francis, who was in the lineup of the Philippines at the time? Who were your teammates? Okay. Let's see if I remember. Uh, Sunny Jaworski. Okay. 
uh, Jimmy Mariano, Big Boy Reynoso, myself, uh, Mon Fernandez, Abet Yudabin, uh, Dave Reguliano, Tembong Melencio, Yoyo Martires, Manny Panel, uh, Joy Cleofas, uh, oh, 11 a.m. Uh, I'm missing yeah. a couple. <laughs> I, I'm missing a couple, but that was basically the team. Oh, um, Bogs, Bogs. Uh, yeah. Is Bogs there? Yeah. Uh, Bogs Adornado. Yeah, I yeah. see Bogs. Okay. Bogs. <laughs> and ah, that's it. Yeah, let me see if I can share this photo there so you, everyone can see. Uh, but the lineup is also there. Uh, yeah. It's. Who won that league? Uh, here. Russia? Russia? Or, or I don't think the US won it, right? Oh, there's the pictures. Yeah, there's yeah. there's the team. Right. The oh, wait, wait, no, no, this is the U.S. Sorry, wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, there's Rich Kelly in the middle. Rich Kelly's in the middle. Right. Wait, wait. Uh, sorry, sorry. It was, it was on already. Okay, yeah, it was on already. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, so you got a you got me, a chance. Let me share again. You got a chance to play against these uh, future NBA players. So the competition was really tough. No, oh, yeah. Also yeah. Look at the national team that day. There. Do you see it? Right here. Yeah, there. There it is. The yeah, Abbott's in the middle. There. Francis, wala pang, wala pang bigote at saka balbas, oh. That's right. <laughs> wala pa. Ayaw yeah. pa tumugo, eh. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was yeah. pretty much, you named everybody pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Was, I'm not sure who this one is. This is, I think it's Yoyo Martires and then this I Sunny. Said, I said... Yeah, I mentioned yeah. Yoyong. Yes, yes, but yes. here on, on the photo. Then Sunny Joris is here. Yes, a bit shorter. Completo, completo. Pati si Tembong nandun eh. Yes, Boggs is there. Yeah, yeah, you, you named everybody. You yeah. named everybody. Oh, oh, great, yeah. great memory. Love it. Yeah. Did, now, did, you, did, want the, you, you want the coaches? Eduque? Caloy Loy Saga? Our trainer was Juan Cotillas. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Nilo Verona. Nilo Verona. Yeah. Nilo Verona also. Yeah. Some of, a lot of these players went to Toyota eventually in the PBA. You see uh, Arnaiz, Jaworski, Fernandez. Uh, yun lang. Uh, Actually, yun, yun lang. lang. Yeah. Yun uh, and then Chris Payong. Iba. Yeah. 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 Paner and Martires went to San Miguel. Iba? Yeah. Then this yeah. is the US team that you beat. That you beat him then that they Oh no, that you lost to, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but you're correct. Uh USSR won the championship. Uh, they beat this Soviet US. Union, right? Yeah, Soviet Union yeah. beat US uh, by eleven points. But this is the US team, yes, that uh, you went up against. Wow. The coach then. Um the coach was I don't know. Gene something. Uh, Gene Barto of ah, University of University. Illinois. Illinois, Illinois. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, Illinois. you're right. Sorry, guys, send me the link, okay? Yeah, oh, yeah, sure. Um, send me this link, huh? Well, later, I will. later. Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll make sure we, we forward that yes. to you. We will, we will. So, send the link. so after you, so you win a championship in Ateneo, uh, you, you win a an Asian championship, you get to compete in the world uh, stage, you win a Mika'a championship. So you're ripe. You're really ripe. To for for the PBA already and and so you do make that move no in 1975 a bunch of you are are brought into the PBA as the Toyota team right uh, from from right. the from the Mika team and uh, yeah. and then there was early success right away what what a successful first season for you especially because actually you were named Mister Basketball after that first season uh, right. of the of the PBA so I mean I, you know the competition was tough Chris Paul was already there. How, how different yeah. was this from the Mika'a? How different was the PBA from the Mika'a? Or was it just the same thing in a different setting? I think it was the same in a different setting. And okay. that's what, because it was basically the same players, right? I mean, mm -hmm. pareho lang, pareho lang ang players. So, yeah. But, uh, so, yeah. But you're right. Uh, 70, I remember I told you 73 in the national team, I sort of was hitting my stride, di ba? Parang, Kung anong gusto mo gawin sa court, 
kaya mo eh. You know, ganun lang, di ba? Because of of your conditioning, I guess, your your age, you're young. And so 75 was one of my one of my best best years, the first year of the PBA. And that's why I was named basketball professional basketball player of the year. Uh yeah, so right. and we won I think we won two championships, two conferences. That first two. That's right. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah. yeah. First two. Yeah, the first two, but this was against, of course, magiging arch rival Joe Crispa. You already had Eskomatsu. You already had your your run-ins with Crispa during the Mika. So now that it's transitioned to the PBA, Crispa now has this loaded team of sila Atoy. Well, eventually sila Atoy, you know, uh, Atoy Bogs, uh, Philip Gid- uh, Gidaben, Fabiosa. They all came uh, a little later on after you won your first championship. But now you develop this rivalry. So tell me what it was like going up against Crispa with all of these bipartisan fans, you know. Either Toyota ka or Chris pa ka. At saka yung, yung, yung intensity of the battles that you had, especially that first year in the PBA. Um, you know, first of all, I never really got into, into um, how should I say it, into the fans. You know, I mean, I, I could hear them and I, 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 I realized the intensity of the rivalry. But, in the court, it was different. First of all, um, I guess it's it's it's. First of all, they were they were for me. Huh? They were a really 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 good team, Crispa. Mm-hmm. All my all the times I played for professional, Crispa always had a good team. So every time we played Crispa, uh, you know, I knew it was going to be, you know, really hard to beat them. So I guess that's where, at least in my point of view, the rivalry started. And, and you know, I, I want to say that um, I make a joke out of it, right? A joke lang to, but huwag kayo masaktan mga Crispa fans. But, you know, mas marami, baka mas marami ang championships nila, right? Mas pwede, pwede mo sabihin, mas magaling sila, di ba? Pero sa paganda ang lalaki, <laughs> well, then, yeah, I mean, you're the one you're the one, you. speak. you're the one to speak for that because you were the heartthrob at the time and I'm sure that the fans were uh, no, cheering no, no. and screaming for you uh, I didn't want to open that that box man. Let's, <laughs> let's leave it let's, let's, let's leave it there let's leave it there <laughs> I'm talking in general as a team. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> but that was intense, I know. The first three, I think it was the first three or the first five titles yata at stake sa, sa PBA. Am I right, Sid? Uh, Chris yeah. Pogba yeah. got ang naglaban. Yeah, because when Chris, won, when Chris Pogba won the third conference of 75, they won the next three or yeah. the next four. Mm. You know? So... Yeah. Yeah, so you're right. The first five or six were all Christmas. Right. Kayo, kayo. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, Francis, take me back to the third conference, the Philippine, the Philippine Championship, the All-Philippine Championship in 1975. Chris, uh, Toyota was going for a Grand Slam. Uh, but then, yung Crispa came back, and then there was a game, I think it was the deciding game, that the Dante Silverio just decided to field in four players in the final, what, 30 seconds. What was that about? What do you mean? I don't say that Dante decided to field uh, just four in the yeah, court? Yeah, just four. Yeah, yeah just four on yeah. the court. Because one of you had fouled out and he refused to put in a fifth player. Yeah. That's what we gathered for the last like minute. Wow. I, you know, and that's how the game ended? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Just for one. Denying you the Grand Slam. And, the ga- and, and that last game was for the championship? I mean, I, last game na yun. Yeah. I don't know. I, you know, honestly, I don't remember that. Uh-huh. I mean, <laughs> I don't. It's it's yeah, so yeah, unlike yeah. it's so unlike Dante, you know. And I don't think he was even the coach. He wasn't the coach. In in seventy five, no. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, was not the coach. Know. He was the manager, right? In the bar or uh, yeah, yeah. Just still, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, okay, now I'm. Check. Now I have yeah, to yeah. Double check sure, everything. Sure. Just check it out. But yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, before we uh, proceed, I don't remember that. Yeah. 
We will double check the uh, saka, uh, our history. Eh, eh, bakit, bakit apat lang ang, baka why? Because of, of I, I suppose the officiating maybe, right? Or that, that, that's that's maybe. what came out. Yeah, that's what came out. In, in protest of... Uh, yeah, maybe. Well, some calls. Yeah. Well, let's uh, no, let's take time right now uh, yeah. just to say hi to the guys who are watching us on yeah. Facebook Live. Uh, Francis, you know who are watching right now? Rino Salazar, Hill Cortez. They're watching oy. right now, and they they oy, say, oy, they, oy, say oy. they say hello. Uh, and uh, yeah, Coach Hill uh, even greeted you in Spanish. Uh, and then uh, there's a. Can I say hi? Yeah, sure. Of sure. course. Hey, um, Rino. And uh, I was in in your city two weeks ago, pero because of itong lockdown, di na kita tinawagan. I always call, I always get together with Reno when I'm in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Hill, kumusta Hill? Thank you. Yeah. yeah, Coach Hill's very active right now with the local basketball scene. Lots of guys greeting you. Lots of guys greeting you. Happy birthday, Sir Francis. And then there's another fellow. He's the son of your former trainer with Toyota, si Mang Greg. His name is Dave Gregorio. So he says hello. Uh, ben, 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 yeah. his, his, oh, father, his father was your trainer with Toyota. He said hi to Abby as well when we spoke to Abby a couple of weeks ago. Oh, good, good, good. Hi, kumusta? Kumusta? And then the first, the first guy who ever interviewed you after you left uh, for the States, si, uh, what's this? Escoda. Mr. Escoda, he interviewed you back in 1990, I think, in Ceramonte. Oh, Bonnie, Bonnie, Bonnie. Yeah, so yeah, he says hello, and you know, and he, oh. he he claimed that's his claim to fame was he, he was the first one to interview after you had left the PBA. He gave he gave him an exclusive <laughs> back then. So yeah, he, he remembers that. So lots of guys watching right now. Lots of guys watching right now. Okay, so Noel. Oh, no voice. Where's Noel? Noel's voice? Well, so, he's uh, yeah. He's on mute. Uh, yeah, okay. He's, okay. Uh, okay. So, so Crispa, Crispa denied the Grand Slam, Francis, in, in 1975. And yeah. then, uh, in 1976, uh, you were about to deny them also in that third conference again, that All-Philippine Championship. Toyota was up 2-0 against Crispa in a best of five. And babawi na sana kayo. But somehow, Crispa was able to come back and win the next three games. What happened in that series? Yeah, and, and we not lost the next three. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Atoy oh basically exploded. Yes. In the... yeah. Oh, maybe. I'm not surprised because that's <laughs> the way he played, man. Grabe yeah, yeah. si Atoy, man. When Atoy was, was hot and, and, you know, uh, unstoppable, man. Grabe si Atoy. Yeah, so I'm, yeah, probably happened. I'm not, I just don't remember the, the, <clears throat> the details. Did you did you feel uh, slighted uh, at all when you did not win the MVP in that first season in '75? Even if you were named Mr. Basketball, but it wasn't you who was the PBA MVP. Did you feel that it should have been you at all? Oh, absolutely. But I didn't feel I didn't feel slighted or or bad, you know, because because you know I knew what I did, you know, alam ko eh. But that's just the way life is. Sometimes you, you, sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. But in my heart, I alam ko na I, I deserve the 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 MVP. But I didn't get it, so ganun. Yeah. But as far as I'm concerned, I knew I knew I that that you know that was my year. Put it that mm -hmm. way, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should you should have had at least one of those trophies. Eh? Uh, sorry. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I got a, a big, uh, yung malakas na maganda. You saw that, that trophy? Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> malakas yung maganda. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah. I, I didn't feel, I didn't feel slighted. Yeah. Uh, lang yan. Yeah. yeah. What was it like in the locker room, being in the locker room with those guys? Eventually, you know, yeah. Abbey King came in in 1977, Arnie Tuadles came in in the 1979. You also acquired Danny Florencio uh, eventually down the road, yeah. you know? What Estoy. Like Estoy Estrada. The... Estoy Estrada, yes. of course, in 70, yeah. ano, uh, when you were starting out also. What was it like being a Toyota player at that time in the locker room with all of these great players? Fernandez, Joe Worski, eventually the young Abbey King. Uh, and then you knew that you had a strong team also. What was it like in the locker room being with these guys? Uh, you know, you can ask them. You can ask them because 
as far as I was concerned, you know, they were my teammates. You know, they asama ko sa team. But I don't know. I was in my own little space. You know, I would just go play hard, practice hard. But you know, I I was not really one to you know um, to hang out. You know, or to so that's that's my memory. You know, although although they were really they were really really good addition to our team. That was a damn good team. No, pero so I uh, I was just glad they were on our team, yeah, especially Abe, <laughs> see Danny, Danny Florencio, my goodness, Estoy, you know, I mean, Arnie Twadles, <laughs> you know, that's a whole that's a whole franchise there. That's right, right correct. Right, that's right. right. <laughs> so, and I think our coach then was uh, Edo Campo. Already, he was our coach. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and for the for a while. Fort Acuna. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Fort, yeah. Fort Acuna, 79 and 80. Uh, Francis, my, my question is, those battles with CRISPA, the earlier, they were really, really intense. And there's actually one game when Metrocom came and hauled some of the players off to uh, off to jail because of, uh, you know, the uh, fight that broke out. Um, I don't know if you remember that particular game, but you know it made headlines, and uh, you know um, the players of the top teams in the PBA uh, had to be disciplined or, or something like that. Would you yeah, recall yeah, yeah. that I, particular I, game? I, yes. Well, if this is what happened. I mean, every time Chris Toyota played, there was always something that's going to happen, right? And <laughs> so I remember, I remember, I remember. Uh, I think General Olivas. Olivas, was the, yeah. yeah. He was yeah. the head of the Metrocom or something. Uh, you know, he, he he told he called. I remember Dante and and Danny Floro and said, you know, you better you better tell your boys to cool it. You know, wala na tong suntukan, ha? kasi kung kung mangyayari yan ulit, kulong ko kayo, right? But you know, when you're young and you're in the game, that that doesn't that doesn't register in your mind. So the next day, suntukan, grave. So I remember going back to the quarters. Biglang may salabas, may bus ng uh, up coach ng Metrocom. Sabi na, no, you're coming with us. So we were all put in Fort Bonifacio, if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. in, in the military stockade there. <laughs> and ang, ang, ang cell namin was facing each other. Dito, one side, Chris Pa, one side, Toyota. <laughs> Right, so you could see, you could see across. Nagigita mo sa bars, di ba? The whole night, walang nakatulog, puro kanchawan. You won't believe it. <laughs> so who was in you front know, of you, Bernie Fabiosa or Atoy ko? Oh, I, I don't remember, but the whole or, night. Or Chris Kalilan. Oh, Chris Kalilan, but <laughs> I don't know, you know. But anyway, so that was, and I think from that moment on, we kind of got. Uh, we realized that we, you know, okay, no one's alive, you know. I mean, we were all, you know, we were all laughing our heads off. So, and then I remember the next morning, pinakawala na kami ng mga six or seven in the morning. Okay, you're out. So we learned our, our, you know, our lesson. But because you were, but because you were one of the marked men of, of Toyota, because you were one of the top scorer, if not the top scorer. Uh, guys yeah. like Fabiosa. Fabiosa was a pest on defense. Chris Kalilan was a rugged guy as well. And, and you did get into some some uh, altercations with them. You know, with, everyone knows about the Fabiosa episode. You and Fabiosa got into it a bit. Um, what was what kind of? Uh, never, how, how, what's that? You never. What what happened? That's your question, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, what, 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 yeah. yeah. What is that about? Okay. And, this this is this is how I remember. And and if you interview him, you know. Confirm that story. Okay. You know, Bernie was really tough. You know, when 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 he's guarding you, I mean tama ka, he's a pest. Hindi ka eh, right? And so so I remember he, he went for a layup and and I, I don't remember who our import was. I think it was maybe Andy Fields or somebody. Black his shot. Uh Pagosa. Ah. So Pagosa fell to the ground. Uh, you know, I remember he was on the ground, you know, and uh, 
na na foul daw siya. So, and ako, you know, I never played dirty, never in my life. So, I I extended my hand to to help him stand up, right? Okay. And you know, I mean, he spat on my face, put it that way. And you know, I I felt it right in my face <laughs> after trying to help him up, right? So right there, I I I just you know I lost it. I mean, what naman ganyan, di ba? I mean, so so I I remember hitting him with my fist, and mm-hmm. so and and so we were both. I mean, I was thrown out, and I don't know about him because I think ang nakita yung sulto ko, eh. yung, mm-hmm. yung yeah, yeah. No, hindi naman makikita yan. Eh. But long story short, we were called to uh, we were called to the office of the commissioner, which was Leo Leo Prieto. Leo Prieto. And I remember Leo knew, knows me. He knows I'm I know I'm not a big, you know I'm a kind of clean player, right? And he kind of knew the history of Bernie. You know, Bernie was tough. So, so I remember he told, he asked us, and what happened? So I told him what happened, and Bernie told him what happened. All I remember is Bernie got a substantially bigger fine, even if, you know, he was what he did wasn't seen, right? But I remember kind of Leo Prieto saying, "Okay, wag na tayo, wag, in, in other words, in English, like, let's let's not fool each other here." You know, Bernie, I saw what you did. Although I don't think he did, right? Mm-hmm. I saw what you did, Francis. I saw what you did. So this is your fine, Bernie. This is your fine, and I think he was suspended for one game. So that's the story. Uh-huh. But after that, years later, I remember Bernie and I meeting somewhere outside, <coughs> and we became friends. Yeah. So that's that's the story, as far as I remember, and I think that's accurate. Mm-hmm. But there's another story uh, yeah, that's that, right. that I wanted to ask. I asked Abby about it. He, he had very vague memories about it. I want to go back to the 1980 All-Filipino uh, Championship. This was Game 3, I believe it was. Game 3 against Crispa. Um, that uh, Crispa was up 2-0. But then during halftime of that game, Fort Acuna and Pablin Carlos had some kind of... Uh, leading to uh, Fort Acuna being fired at halftime. So... Were you there? Did you see the proceedings of what happened there? And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I I know exactly what happened. I don't know why it happened, but mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. Um, I believe it was the issue of uh, Fort didn't didn't want to to use Sunny Jaworski. You know, the whole Sunny wasn't wasn't put in the game, and and I think Mr. Carlos asked the coach Fort Fort, but why aren't you using Sunny? And, I don't know what Ford said, and Mr. Carlos insisted. Possible, you know, he's our, you know, he's our leader, right? So Ford said, if if you insist on that, I'm 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 resigning as a coach. You know, Ford stood his ground. He was a man of principle, right? So so whether I don't know what he was thinking, what the issue was, but point is, he walked out. He so Mr. Carlos took over the game. Mm-hmm. And I think I don't know. Maybe it was Reno Salazar at this point, uh, who was the assistant. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, so Sunny played, and we won that game. You know, yeah. I remember we won that game. So, yes. so yes. I don't know the reason, but yeah, that's what happened. So it was, I you know, I should have met him. So yeah. So that's it. That's yeah. the story yeah. there. Aside, aside from uh, Bernie, a guy like Bernie Fabiosa would always uh, be matched up against you. There was a matchup that people like to see. You against Mike Bilbao. That was always a good matchup oh my for goodness. people. And, uh, oh my goodness. You know, and, and then you did, I think you did say in an interview before, he was pretty tough to go against. He was pretty, you know. Oh, so- no. Of all of them, Mike, Mike was the hardest for me. Because Mike was smart like hell, you know. Mike, mm-hmm. Mike would study you and, and know exactly what to do, right? So for some reason, I had a really hard time with with Mike, and and uh, yeah, but you know to be honest, when when Mike came in the league and and you know was guarding in a, uh, uh, he did a very good job. I mean, mm-hmm. Mike. Alam niya sa ngapu kung tay. 
<laughs> yeah. So that was for me. Mike gave me the hardest time. Okay. Although there were games, la. You know, so that's that's Mike Bilbao for you. you know? um, some of the players have some of the players we've spoken to have mentioned Mike Bilbao. I think a lot of the fans don't know him so well, no, because he did leave the league early and all yeah, of that. But yeah, but he got yeah. hurt. Yeah, yeah. But Mike was started in La Salle when I started in La Peneo. Yeah. Same year, so Camille Mike. Same year, Camille. That's another dimension to that matchup, because because it's Ateneo La Salle, so people would always. Would always look at it that way uh, as well, though. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although that's the that's the first year. I mean, that year in La Salle, La Salle never beat us. You know, usually at least one one yan they beat each other, right? <laughs> that year, wala. I mean, and you know, you know our Ateneo team, our Ateneo team. We had five candidates for the or four for the national team in that '69 college team. Uh, Joy Cleofas, Marty Samson, Baby Boy Morales, Chito Afable. Those four. I mean, grande. What a team. <laughs> <laughs> but in, but in 1982, uh, Francis, this is the last time you won, You were part of the mythical mythical selection. Ano? And you joined yeah. the mythical selection that time with, with the two other te- uh, three other team, uh, two other teammates, di ba? Fernandez, King, and saka... Yeah. Ayaw, yeah. Ayaw. The, and a lot of people are calling 82 your best year. Um, uh, did you think it was your best year? Or talagang hinug na hinug na daw yung Francis Arnaiz in Um I think my best year was 75. But but 82, yeah, I made the mythical team. Well, we had a very good import. We had Coons, Donny Coons, right? Yeah. Remember yeah, Donny Coons? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, him and I had this had this chemistry. Na, so he helped a lot, you know, that in my, you know, in, in, in the way I played. You know what, guys? Ganito. It's, I think it's almost nine. It's like 6.20, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, can I, can, can I, can we just uh, divert a little bit from from basketball? Just mm-hmm. for a while. Okay? Yes, all right. Of okay. course. And, of course. And, and I think that the question that, that, you know, needs to be asked, you know, yeah. Is so so. I'm I turned 69 today. 69. Mm-hmm. Yes. One more year and I'm 70. Oh my goodness, grab it. Okay. <laughs> but it, here's the question, and this is what I'd like to leave this this interview with, right? Is what did what what did I learn? You know, from all this. This I was young, celebrity, good basketball, blah, all these things, all these mm-hmm. years. What can what who am I? What can I leave? What did I learn? What you know what if you can call it wisdom, what can I impart, right? To younger people, younger, you know, especially these days where where everything's crazy, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And so so you know, I, I just wanna say this. You know, um being a celebrity, being a sports figure, being somebody up there idolized by you know people isn't all isn't life, you know. It isn't all in the end of buhay, you know. Um in the madale, it's not easy to to be up there and, and, and be idolized, you know. And and because at the end of the day and this is what I've learned. At the end of the day, you know, your skills, what made you a celebrity, usually goes goes away, right? I mean, nobody even remembers how many championships you won or what who won that game or this. What, na yan eh. so what's important is this. Is, is, is I've realized that, you know, as you get older, you, you know, all these things fade away. They're, they're nothing. Well, I am in, in the... In 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 the in the scope of life, that those are just ten years. Ten years that's gone, right? What's important, I think, is how one ends his life, his career, his, his you know. And I think we must never forget that although it's not bad to be to be up there in the limelight, very few, very few can handle it. Very few. Hindi na you know. 
I couldn't handle it. You know, that, that being in that status, right? So at the end of the day, this is what I learned. What's important, the most important thing is one, through all of that, you have to learn your, the most important thing in your life is your relationship with God, the Lord. That's number one, right? Some people learn it the hard way. And that's one, and that's me, right? Two, your family, you know? You know, as a celebrity, as a sports figure up there, you know, sometimes you, you do things, you know? And it's just not me. Hindi lang ako. You know, you hurt people close to you because of who you are. You're, you think you can get away with everything. Correct? At the end, when you're, when you're getting older and older, you start to look, hey, anong, tina, anong importante sa buhay ko? Is pamilya. Panginoon, pamilya. You know? Huh? And, and those two, remember, they're, they're with you in the beginning and they will be with you at the end. So if there's anything you need to strive for, and I'm talking to anyone out there, it's not to be, a, you know, not to be in the limelight, that, although that's not bad, you know. That comes with the territory if you have skills. But never forget, you know, when you're older now, all that remains is God and your family. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how you should end the last two minutes or the last quarter of, of the game, you know, of, of life. Correct? And, and, you know, and that's it. That's, that's I think that's, that's the message that, that, you know, we need to, you know, people need to hear. You know. uh, well, that's, that's, that's beautiful. That's um, it, yeah. yeah. That's well said, sir. Yeah, that, that's yeah. beautiful, you know, and then, yeah, well, thank you for that. And I'm sure everyone, if someone already said on the, on the stream, amen to that. And, uh, yeah, because that's it, you know. Uh, you have yeah. to start. Too bad, they say too bad that um, you get wisdom when, when, when you're old. You can't really do anything about it anymore. <laughs> yeah. No, no, but... You know, you just you just have to go through life and and experience stuff, and you know that at the end of the day, at the end of the day, that's what remains with you. Mm -hmm. You know, is your panginoon and and your family, mm -hmm. you know, and with that, and and uh, you know, I'm most richly blessed, just in in that in that uh, in that way. Okay. Now, unless, you know, and please don't look at me as, as a saint or as a good guy. You know? No, no, I'm the same person. I'm, you know, okay. it's, you know, there's only isa lang ang mabayat, isa lang ang ilang Panginoon. Yun lang, you know. So, you know, I, that's just the message. That, you know, especially times like this, di ba? Yung, yes. yung may corona, may dito sa America, patayan, it's hatred. Man, that's, that's, you know, it needs God to change our hearts, to change our hearts, you know, and, and but nobody sees him. Nobody it seems that he's outside now, you know, and you know, and people don't go to him and he's the answer, right? To all this, to all this stuff going on. Yeah. So you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Francis to sixty nine. Um looking back at your fruitful career, um what, what do you remember the most about being a basketball player and about, uh, you know, leaving it all behind? You know, when I retired, people ask me that. Don't you miss it? Don't you miss? No, I, not one bit. You know, I was glad. I was in, happy I was out of that. You know, I, I, one day I just said, you know what, I, I don't want to. You know, first, the, I, the reason I retired is I... I the interest wasn't there anymore. My mind wasn't in the game anymore. I didn't want to go down, you know, not being able to play well or give my best because wala, wala na yung interest no eh. You know, it's in... Yeah. in yeah. So, so I just decided to hang it up. But I, I never I never really missed the, you know, that that part of my life. Patus na yun. So I just moved on, you know, that's it. Yeah, yeah. 
Zone. Well, then I just need to ask this because I know there's a bunch of them listening right now. The Hinebra fans, you know, that after Toyota disbanded, you moved to Gilby slash Hinebra for like a, a three-year stint uh, that that started. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys didn't want to play for 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 the Manila Beer franchise. I think that's why you and Sunny and a couple of others went to the Gilby. How was that experience? Of course, it wasn't Never Say Die yet at the time. That the legend had not been born yet about Never Say Die. But those last three years. You did win. Uh, there was a championship there, although uh, you got to play with Billy Ray Bates for a short while because you, that's that's just about the time that you left. Uh, yes. The, the, PBA. the last co- the last conference, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but you know that that short stint in in Hinebra, you know, just just talk about that a, a little because we all know the Toyota days were were, were very successful. How about how about Hinebra? You know, my memory is this. When we joined, it was Gilby's. It was Gilby's mm-hmm. tournament, right? Right. Gilby's gym, I think. I think when we got there, it became Hinebra. But um, I don't really think they had they them, had this the spirit of what Hinebra is now. Mm-hmm. I, I believe, and I strongly believe this, that the one who brought that there was Sonny Jaworski. You know, that's that's. I mean, um, that was. His, 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 what he gave to that, to Hinebra, to that company, his spirit, you know. Sunny gave the, the spirit of Hinebra to Hinebra, and it started when he joined Hinebra. I was just the, the, the Kasama, you know. And, and I would, I, I played the same way. I always played the 100%, you know. What I could do in the court, I never, I never, you know, it was all out from first quarter to the last. Walang tig, walang ano yan, walang. It was all out right away. You know, I could, you know. So, so yeah, I would like to think, but the one, the man responsible for the Hinebra spirit is Sunny Jaworski. There's no doubt. There's no doubt, yeah. But he did you know, man. You know, he, and even after I left already, that's when that that team started to pick up. People started to notice it and. The fans would flock to them, and that's all because of. Oy, I'll tell you this. Um, the last time I was in Manila, I mean, no, not the last time, but one time I was there two or three years ago when Hinebra won the, with Tim Cohn, won the championship. I think two years ago, and Araneta Coliseum in championship. So Sunny and I watched the game. Right, right. Mm-hmm. First time we watched a game together in Manila. Huh? So pick me up. We go. We enter the Coliseum. This is in ni- 2017 or 18? 18. This is way past us, right? The moment they saw Sani step in the court, in the, going to his seat, the whole Coliseum goes, Jaworski, Jaworski. <laughs> yep. And this is in the middle of the game. You know, I mean, I mean that's it. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's, that's the spirit. <laughs> I was shocked. They didn't even know who I was. They thought I was Martinez. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. One guy saw me and said, Wait, you know, he came out in the Jumbo Patron, right? Yeah. Sabi yeah. Isang, may nag- comment. You know, somebody told us, Ang bihira naman yung katabi ko. Sabi niyo, Wait, sino yung katabi ni Jaworski? Si Martinez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, probably the, yeah. that's probably the first time yeah, and yeah. only time that you yeah, were yeah. mistaken for Yoyo. Okay, lang yun, Yoyo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was at that game. I, I remember. I was, uh, I was I, announcing that game. I, when uh, you yeah, that yeah, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. I told my photographer take a picture of those two because I think this is the first time they've watched the game together after retiring right. from the PBA. So oh, yeah. yeah, we have a photo of that. And uh, well, speaking of Sunny, uh, before we let you go, uh, Francis, I know. Just can you just tell us what he was as a player, as a teammate, as a friend, and you know uh, what he's meant to you all these years. Well, first of all, he was a very good friend. He, you know, I, I was um, a. a how should I say it? Um, I had my own ways, right? Um, I was young. I like to to live life, you know, enjoy myself and all that. But Sunny was was very 
at a condition condition yan eh, all day i mean every day was in good shape every time and sometimes he, i i guess he would see you know that that last night i let's say i stayed up late or i did this i did this but not once did he ever tell me na oy gosh, you know ingat naman eh dahan dahan lang you know you know that but he accepted me for who i was and that's sunny jorsky he showed me by example how a player should be you know give his give his best every single game be in, be in shape every single game give your heart to your team and and so on so that is as a friend and as a teammate no what can i say you know sunny i think there was an issue about you know uh, somebody saying that wala naman uh, uh, specialty shot or something sunny right <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was atoy you no know, yeah and, and nothing against atoy but you must remember sunny could do could was all over he could rebound assist shoot three points go for the drive kung saan siya kailangan dun siya eh. you know mm-hmm. and and somebody co- people call me mr clutch i think he was the, he was a mr clutch you know before me i think so 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 maybe wala siyang specialty dahil lahat specialty niya eh. you know that's mm-hmm. that's what i would say right right so right. as a teammate you know as a teammate he knew he knew you knew always knew that he had your back you know you know he would give 101% every single game so what more can you ask diba right? uh, yeah, so nothing nothing good i have nothing bad to say about san he was for me you know an example on, on what how athletes athletes should you know should uh, look at their career yeah yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, Francis, before in, we, in, I, I, in in relation to a career oh sunny really in, yeah huh from player to coach to to senator <laughs> to what else i mean that's that's a career right huh <laughs> that's right correct and so just think about that you know and he had this was that this was his plan and he stuck to it and he got it you know he got he lived life you know he he made you know he became the best he could be in, in that yeah. yeah well we just want to know francis uh well i know you have a lot of celebrating to do being 69 again happy birthday and thank you for for spending your portion of your birthday with us <laughs> yeah we yeah. just want to know who your top five favorite teammates of all time are ah oh, wow my you know i mean <laughs> i don't think my mind can, can you know can uh, i don't know uh hard to say hard, you know off the off the cuff right now because i'll probably miss one or two that i think should be there and i forgot you know yeah, so yeah, yeah. i'll leave it at that Okay. So, all I all I know is I have no I have no reg- I have no regrets in everyone I played with, you know. Uh, I I just played me personally. I just played my best and uh I never really you know, uh looked at others too much, you know. Basta ako laro and that's it, you know. And uh, that was it. Well, I know you've I know you've answered this but, perhaps uh, in, in the past. Put me in a spot with those five uh-huh. players. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So I know you've you probably answered this in in past interviews of yours, but you know, just for everyone before we we part t- today, when you left yeah. in 1986 and went to the states and your PBA career was over, was it just you knew it was time to just go? Was that it? Absolutely. 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 Yeah. And that's that's all it was. That's all it was. That, you know. It just—it was just time to move on, you know. I, I gave, I left everything there, and and uh, that's it, you know. Uh, let's 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 you know look for other things to do, and that's that's a completely different story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know you need you need a whole book for that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll we'll do that. Um, yeah. Francis, Francis, stay safe there. I know there's a lot of unrest going on in uh, in the U.S. right now, and 
and the pandemic isn't over yet. So you do have a lot of fans pa rin yeah. up to now who are yeah. logging yeah. in, watching. Some of uh, are asking questions, but unfortunately, we're out of time. Your message na lang to all of the Francis Arnais fans that have stuck with you through all these years who still remember your glory days, still remember that looping layup, and uh, you know who have really been your supporters throughout all these years. Your message to them before we let you go. Um, well, first of all, for those fans who who would watch me and us play that, and we never met, you know, I never got the chance to talk to you, to thank you. I want to take this opportunity to, you know, to thank you for being there, even if I wasn't aware of it or I, you know, in, in, you know, in the kita pinansin or something like that. You know, now as an older person, I, I, I appreciate what a fan is, you know, and 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 if I only had that that mentality when I was younger, when I was playing, everything would have been perfect. But that's not life, diba? Uh, so I just want to take this opportunity. Maraming salama sa sa support nyo noon, no? and ngayon that you're still obviously interested in. And so to you, I just I just say a big thank you. Huh? And, and uh, that I never got the chance to say it or before. You know? I just want to you know, acknowledge you guys. You know? okay. So that's it. And to you, uh, Charlie and you, and uh, what's the name, Sid and Noel. And Noel, yeah. Salamat. And uh, it, it, it was fun doing this. Huh? All right. It's so well, fun for us. Yeah, well, Happy we are birthday. we are fans, definitely the three of we us and, and, and uh, countless others who are who are watching right now and who will watch the video later on. And it's been such an honor and a privilege on your birthday, also your 69th birthday. Happy birthday once again. Happy birthday, Francis. Are nice. We hope you have a Happy great birthday, celebration Francis. with your family. We know family is special, as you said earlier, and uh, you know we hope you have a grand celebration uh, this, that evening uh, over there. No, no, actually, it's just it's just my wife and I. Mm -hmm. Yeah, intimate just, then. You know, that's it. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, well, you know, well, we, we are, uh, you know, we don't want to take too much time from uh, Francis on his birthday. So, yan ang episode 17 natin dito sa An Eternity of Basketball uh, celebration with uh, Francis Arnais, one of the, the best the PBA has ever seen, Mr. Clutch himself. Maraming salamat, Francis, for gracing our show. And uh, on behalf of Sid Ventura, and Noel Zarate, I'm Charlie Kuna, signing off for this episode of An Eternity of Basketball with Mr. Clutch, the birthday boy, Francis Arnais. Maraming salamat. Thank you, guys. Thank Stay you safe, everyone. Us.